Okay, almost there. Little to the left. There! Woo! Yeah! Hello, and welcome to my not-so-extensive guide to baby metal. This will hopefully be entertaining. However, if it isn't, it will at least be informative, and if not that, I will be content to know I drained away some of your precious free time. Also, depending on how much further you are in the future, there could be an updated version of this guide linked in the description. Now, with that settled, and without further ado, let's continue. So, you may be asking, or perhaps not, what exactly is a baby metal? Baby metal is a Japanese kawaii metal band. Kawaii meaning cute or adorable, and is a subgenre of metal they created. はい、えっと、ベビーメタルの音楽は元からカワイイとメタルの2つを融合した音楽性でやっているんですけど、その音楽性は今もなお変わってないと思っています。They were formed in 2010, and their name comes from the birth of this new style of metal, which fuses Japanese pop with various genres of metal. The three members are Su Metal, Moa Metal, and Momo Metal. Su Metal です! Moa Metal です! We are Baby Metal! They are backed by a group of session musicians known as the Kami Band for live shows. Their discography includes four studio albums, a greatest hit album, a large amount of live albums and DVD Blu-ray releases. Despite what some may think whenever they hear Japanese music, Baby Metal hasn't produced any music for anime. Though, they did create the opening song for the Western cartoon Unikitty. Baby Metal originally started as a subgroup of Sakura Gakuin, an all-girl Japanese idol group themed around school life and extracurricular activities, which was formed in 2010 by the Amuse Talent Agency. It should be emphasized that Sakura Gakuin was not actually a school, so all the girls still attended a regular school. The group would normally contain between 10 and 12 members at a time of whom fell within the ages of 10 to 15 years old. Members would transfer out and go on to other ventures when they had finished compulsory education. And leading up to that, they would release an annual studio album and hold a Road to Graduation concert. <laughs> then, new members would transfer into the group. They had released 11 studio albums, one for each year, up until it disbanded in 2021. Baby Metal was originally formed as the Heavy Music Club by the producer Kei Kobayashi, with the founding members, Suzuka, Moa, and the now former member, Yui. They released four songs under Sakura Gakuin, but only three appeared on SG albums in some form. All three members also continued to do other SG activities in addition to performing with Baby Metal while they were still members. In 2013, Baby Metal split from SG and became an independent act due to Sue's graduation and leaving Sakura Gakuin and the rising popularity of Baby Metal, while Yui and Moa remained in SG until their graduation in 2015. Now let's meet the members of Baby Metal. First off, we have Sue Metal, full name Suzuka Nakamoto, who was born on December 20th, 1997, in Hiroshima, Japan. She has been a performer most her life and was admitted to Actors School Hiroshima at the age of eight, where she also performed with her sister Himeka in a duo called Tween. She was signed by a Muse Talent Agency in 2007 after she had finished in second place at an audition held by the company. She was then placed in a group called Karen Girls, which had been formed to sing songs for the anime Zetai Karen Children, and then disbanded when the show had ended. Later in 2010, Sue became one of the founding members of Sakura Gakuin, where she became the lead vocalist of the Heavy Music Club, because of her surprisingly powerful vocal ability and unique stage presence for such a young age. She had also became the student council president during her final year and had a single solo song titled Sakura Iro No Avenue.
On Baby Metal's first two albums, Sue Metal has four solo songs, Akatsuki, Rondo of Nightmare, Amore, and No Rain, No Rainbow. Sue usually takes the leadership role for Baby Metal in most situations, including media appearances. She has worked very hard to improve her English over the years as well. We're very nervous, but after a few songs, the audience reacts to our singing and dancing. I really wanted to perform there, so I'm very happy that my dream came true. She also has songs that she sings entirely in English, such as Believing, From Dusk Till Dawn, and the English versions of both Elevator Girl and The One. Her life dream was to become a singer and songwriter, with the former coming true early in her life, and the latter when she became the credited lyricist for their song Divine Attack, off their concept album released in 2023. Sue has spent years expanding her vocal capabilities and has always surprised listeners with her range, even learning to rap specifically for their song BMC. Yet despite her very serious nature when it comes to her role in baby metal and her ability to project a very commanding presence on stage when needed, at her core, she is a girl that is incredibly sweet, goofy, and dorky incarnate, something she often unleashes on stage. <laughs> Next up, we have Moa Metal, full name Moa Kikuchi, born on July 4, 1999 in Nagoya, Japan. Moa is the shortest member. <laughs> As I was saying, Moa is the shortest member of Baby Metal, standing at just five feet tall. Even today, she struggles with her eternal battle with smallness. Moa started performing at a very young age and was signed by Amuse in 2007 after winning a competition held by the company. In 2010, Moa joined Sakura Gakuin, where she became a member of the Mini Patty Cooking Club. Donning the green bandana, the Twinkle Stars Baton Club, and the Heavy Music Club, where she took the role of scream and dance, though it may be best to not take the word scream literally. When Baby Metal split off in 2013, she continued on with SG, and like Sue before her, became the student council president in her final year before she eventually graduated in 2015. During the early years of Baby Metal, Moa was a member of the subunit known as Black Baby Metal with Yui Metal, where they performed four songs as a duo, Onidari Dai Saxon, Song 4, GJ, and Sis Anger. She was also credited as writing the lyrics to Song 4 together with Yui. It is currently unknown if Black Baby Metal or any of these songs will return now that Momo has joined Baby Metal. Moa does enjoy singing, which she has been doing since she was in Sakura Gakuin, even doing a few special solo performances, such as taking the lead role for their song Headbanger at concerts to celebrate her birthday, and performing several black baby metal songs by herself. However, she has said she has no desire for taking lead, as her passion is for dancing, something she has worked hard mastering, as she had very little experience in it when she joined the group. In fact, her only greater passion may be for food, which she loves, and she is quite determined to make sure this isn't missed by anyone. <laughs> Moa has always been a kind-hearted and loving person, and someone who really enjoys interacting with the crowd so as to better show her love and appreciation for the fans. Apparently that applies to security guards as well. That is, if she isn't bonking them over the head while she continues to fight a losing war against the flag. Fatality. Now, on to our newest member. Gara 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 gara. Gara 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 gara. Momo Metal. Full name Momoko Okazaki, who was born on March 3, 2003 in Fukuoka, Japan, and she moved to her hometown of Kanagawa at the age of three. 
She joined a muse in 2014 and transferred into Sakura Gakuin in the following year, and like Moa, joined the Mini Patty Cooking Club, except donning the yellow bandana, as well as the Science Logica Club. Momo loves to dance, with her dream once being to become a backup dancer to an artist. Her training started at around the age of nine, becoming skilled in ballet, hip-hop, and jazz. So when she joined SG, she became known as one of their best dancers and even choreographed a dance for the group. She is also the daughter of the famous Japanese comedian, stage name Hanamaru Hakata, and this could explain her sense of humor and all-around goofy nature, as well as her propensity to smile a lot. Like seriously, she seems to love smiling more than breathing. If she does something better than dancing, it's probably smiling. In fact, the perpetual energy generator might be a myth, but the perpetual joy generator may have been proven with the existence of Momo. She appears to be a living embodiment of a fusion reactor of joy, spreading happiness everywhere she goes. Momo has also had a modeling and acting career, appearing in commercials and TV shows, as well as making a film debut with Itazura and a Kiss in 2016, and even playing Elizabeth Midford in the Black Butler musical in 2017-18. Then, in 2018, she graduated SG and left a muse to transfer to a high school abroad so she could fulfill one of her goals of studying English in a native-speaking country and didn't reappear to the public eye until her appearance at the Taiwanese music festival Super Slipper 10 in August of 2019 as an Avenger, one of the three rotating backup dancers for baby metal that temporarily filled the empty spot left by Yui's departure from the group, fulfilling her dream to be a backup dancer for an artist. Momo got beyond her expectations and was able to accomplish something she probably thought of as impossible. <laughs> Her implausible wish came true when on April 1st in 2023 she was finally named Momo Metal, taking the role of Scream and Dance in Baby Metal. Then less than a year later, during the concerts to celebrate her birthday, she proceeded to take the role Scream, literally, when she took the lead role for their song Headbanger, as well as the special performance of Metataro. Though I am pretty sure Moa was just wishing for reinforcements against the flag. And very rarely do we get everything we want. Flawless victory. When Momo had joined Baby Metal, it had been over five years since the group had started operating as a duo with just Sue and Moa. Yui Mizuno, formerly known as Yui Metal, had stopped performing with Baby Metal in late 2017 due to an undisclosed health issue and officially retired from the group on October 19th in 2018 with a statement of her decision which also thanked and apologised to her fans and those she worked with. This was the last time she has been heard from since then, except the brief comments made in the Sakura Gakuin 10th anniversary book. Yui had tried out for Sakura Gakuin with Moa at the age of 11 with the song Over the Future from Sue's former group Karen Girls, a song Baby Metal would later perform a cover of at their Legend D concert in 2012. She was a sweet and shy girl who was good at dancing and loved tomatoes. And the music from Sue's former group inspired her as it helped her endure a family member's life-threatening illness. Throughout their time in SG and Baby Metal together, the three girls had regarded each other as family, and that hasn't changed after her departure. Most importantly, Sue and Moa has said they supported Yui and respected the decision she made to leave, as well as whatever she chose to do in the future, a message some of her fans should take to heart. Baby Metal started as a quixotic brainchild of Koba Metal, full name Kei Kobayashi, who has been a producer at Amuse since 1996. He had felt the metal scene in Japan was getting increasingly old and needed a jolt of youth to jumpstart the genre's popularity again. So, after he was assigned to Sakura Gakuin, he began creating the Japanese pop metal fusion group he had planned. When he had heard Sue singing at the Karen Girls' farewell concert, he was convinced that with her vocal capability, she wouldn't be overwhelmed by a full metal band. 
so he chose her to be the lead vocalist. Then, to add an idol-like dance aspect, he recruited Yui and Moa, and then began working with Mikiko Mizuno, the choreographer that was assigned to Sakura Gakuin. She had been teaching dance since 19, based on her experience in ballet and street dance. Though she had no experience with the metal genre, she was able to adapt her choreography to the music and has become a key part to baby metal's success since the beginning as the dancing became integral to the group. When the girls began working on the music, they were shocked at what they had begun working on as none of them had experience with metal and had initially found it to be scary. They had also mistook the devil horns that is often used by metalheads for fox shadow play, something that was then adopted by them. <laughs> the mistake also became the foundation of the sci-fi fantasy lore that surrounds the band. Lore that is filled with puns, pop culture references and parody, things Koba has a fondness for and can be quite convoluted, so it is impossible to go into too much detail with this video. With that in mind, I will only cover some aspects that commonly come up. An example is that when Baby Metal introduces themselves, they will use a pun with the English word death instead of the Japanese word des. Baby Metal des. As des means I am or we are and is pronounced similarly. The fox hand sign they adopted became the inspiration for the fox god, Baby Metal's fictional god of metal that summoned them. Also, whenever there has been a question in an interview they can't or don't want to answer, they have been known to respond with Only the Fox God knows! You will see a lot of Fox imagery in various aspects of Baby Metal, including some elaborate set designs they've had over the years. A fan is also referred to as a Kitsune, the Japanese word for Fox, and occasionally Magitsune as the female equivalent. While Baby Metal refers to the whole of the fan base as the one, for which they wrote their song of the same name in tribute to them. They also created the English version because they were touched by all the overseas fans who learned the Japanese lyrics of their songs. Another thing to be aware of is April 1st, also known as Fox Day, which is the official holiday of baby metal. A lot of releases, announcements and concerts happen on or around this day and you will see it repeatedly appear in their past. Now let's discuss some of their history and how they reached to where they are today. Early on, with almost no budget due to being a part of a fledgling idol group, Baby Metal had sourced their clothes from friends and family. They also couldn't afford a live band through their earliest years, performing to backtracks and later adding a group called Baby Bones, who wore skeleton costumes and danced around while pretending to play the instruments. They eventually made their live debut at the first Sakura Gakuin Festival in November of 2010 with a performance of Doki Doki Morning. The song would eventually be released on SG's first album in April of 2011 and then as a digital single. Eventually a music video for it was released on a limited edition DVD in October of 2011 and sparked their first instance of going viral on the internet that same year. Then in March of 2012, a cover of Doki Doki Morning was released by the band Kiba of Akiba on a collaboration CD single with Baby Metal, where each band would cover each other's song. This led Baby Metal to performing Kiba of Akiba's song, Animation With You, at many of their early shows. Unsatisfied with only performing at regular SG events, Baby Metal slowly began performing at places like strip malls, small venues, and eventually in August of 2012, they became the youngest performers to ever play at the Summer Sonic Music Festival in Japan. They were on a small stage near the food court usually reserved for people like stand-up comedians and were a late addition to the lineup with the tickets already sold out, so the girls were worried no one would come see them. However, their music drew a crowd regardless, as many surprised by their performance had stopped eating to watch the curiosity. Then, with their growing popularity online, they had their first performance outside of Japan in November of that year at the Anime Festival held in Singapore. Also in late 2012, on October 6th at their Legend Eye concert,
Baby Metal's live session band, known as the Kami Band, had made their debut for two songs. Then, on February 26th of 2014, Baby Metal finally released their first album, simply titled Baby Metal. This was followed shortly after, on March 1st and 2nd, with them performing at the Budokan, a venue that has obtained worldwide fame, with many legendary artists performing there. This also marked a milestone for Sue, as she had dreamed of performing there since she was a little girl. It was also the point where the Kami Band would become a permanent presence for the group. Then after the shows, Baby Metal announced their first world tour, which included the US, the UK, and various other countries in Europe. The album release and the Gimme Chocolate music video going viral online led to what became a major step forward for the band, when they were invited to the UK Sonosphere Festival in 2014, as this would propel them toward being legitimized on an international level. Initially, they had been slated on a small side stage. However, due to the buzz online and a grassroots effort by baby metal fans, they were moved up to the main stage of about 50,000 people, which became their first large stage outside of Japan. The girls had initially been worried the crowd would not accept them, as UK festival crowds are notoriously hostile. Most of the people there had no idea who they were and were perplexed at what they were seeing, but by the time Baby Metal were walking off the stage, they were shouting for more. See you! See you! On November 8th of 2014 at O2 Academy in Brixton, UK, they debuted their song Road of Resistance, a song created in collaboration with Herman Lee and Sam Totman of Dragon Force, and it would eventually be released as their first single of their second studio album. Later, on June 15th of 2015, they would attend the Metal Hammer Golden Gods to accept the award for Best Breakthrough Band, where they would also perform Road of Resistance and Gimme Chocolate, both with Dragon Force as their backing band. They had previously performed Gimme Chocolate with Dragon Force a few days before the award ceremony at the Download Festival in the UK, when Baby Metal crashed the event with an invite by Dragon Force after the event coordinator had rejected the numerous fan requests to invite them by saying that they had no place at Download and were only a Japanese fad. Baby Metal's second album, titled Metal Resistance, would release on April 1st in 2016. The international release included the exclusive track from Dusk Till Dawn, while the Japanese version had the song Syncopation instead. The international version would also include the English version of The One instead of its Japanese counterpart. Their 2016 tour then kicked off on April 2nd at the Wembley Arena in the UK, which eventually took them back to the Download Festival in the following June, but this time with an official invite and on the main stage. In July of that year, Baby Metal had also made a special appearance at the 2016 Alternative Press Music Awards in the US, where they performed their single Karate, and afterward, Rob Halford of Judas Priest joined them on stage to perform the Judas Priest songs Painkiller and Breaking the Law. They then concluded the world tour with two back-to-back -back shows at the Tokyo Dome, with about 55,000 fans attending each night, and where Sue would troll Moa in front of them. I do wonder if Sue was brave or naive. Throughout the year in 2017, Baby Metal supported various artists as an opening act on their world tours, including Metallica, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Guns N' Roses, Corn and Stone Sour on several of their shows. They then commenced their Five Fox Festival tour, where they held several shows in Japan with specific audience requirements such as all male, all female, all teenagers, and so on. This tour concluded with the Big Fox Festival shows, with the final one on October 15th being the last time Baby Metal would perform as the original trio. Prior to the Legend S concert that was held in December of 2017 to celebrate Sue's 20th birthday, it was announced that Yui was advised by her doctor 
not to perform at this show. Sue and Moa had considered cancelling it, but Moa knew how important it was to Sue as it would take place in her hometown of Hiroshima, so they agreed to continue on as a duo. This would also unfortunately become the last show the Kami band member Mikio Fujioka would perform with Baby Metal as their longtime guitarist passed away on January 5th of 2018 from falling injuries suffered while stargazing. While the Dark Side law had been planned far in advance of these events, it became truly reflective of the most difficult year for baby metal, as Sue and Moa, as well as the fans, tried to adjust to the absence of Yui. Sue and Moa had also discussed quitting after Yui left, but chose to continue on so as to leave open the spot for her if she would return. They also wanted to prove that they could do it themselves, and though it was hard, the struggles had created a stronger bond between them as they learned to rely on each other more. The 2018 tour would see them return to download again, to a massive crowd, despite the entirety of the tour being a dance formation experiment with additional backup dancers to support Sue and Moa, and even a change in costumes to make them look like elves. And, uh, whatever this is. The following year was an improvement over the last, when in June of 2019, the first major concert of the year was held. With it came the announcement of the Avengers, which would fill the empty spot, restoring the three-person formation fans preferred. They didn't sing, nor have a mic, and it was never announced who the three girls were. However, fans at the shows were able to recognize them as Riho Sayashi, formerly of the J-pop group Morning Muzume, who is now a solo artist and actress, and Kano Fujihira, previously from Sakura Gakuin, who later joined the J-pop group One Five, as well as the now current member of baby metal Momoko Okazaki. This would also be the concert that their song Papa Ya, from the album that was coming out later that year, would make its live debut, featuring the Thai rapper F Hero, who appeared personally to perform his part. Then, on October 11th, Baby Metal had its first headlining arena show in the U.S., which was held at the Forum in Los Angeles to coincide with the release of their new album, with Momo as one of their Avengers that night. The show would also feature the new additions to the Kami Band, as four members from the U.S. were added to the lineup. The album, titled Metal Galaxy, had 14 tracks on the international release, and featured various artists, among them Tim Henson and Scott LePage of Polyphia on the song Brand New Day, and Joachim Broden from Sabaton on O Maginai. The Japanese version of the album also featured two exclusive tracks, BMC, which would later be released worldwide as a digital single, as well as Up Down Left Right BBAB, which to this day has never been performed live. In exchange, the international version would feature the English version of the song Elevator Girl. Somehow I think everyone not in Japan got the short end of the stick. By the end of the Metal Galaxy tour, which ended in March of 2020, Momo had become the only Avenger still actively performing with Baby Metal. On October 30th of 2020, Baby Metal was featured on Bring Me the Horizons track King Slayer. Both bands had been friends since they had met at the Kerrang Awards in 2015 and supported each other ever since, with Baby Metal bringing them on their 2019 tour in Japan. So in honor of that friendship, Bring Me the Horizon wanted them featured on their post-human survival horror EP. Moving into their 10th anniversary, Baby Metal was then invited to Kohaku, NHK's 71st annual television event held on December 31st, of 2020. This would be their first time, and the honor of performing at the event is by invitation, and only the most successful Japanese singing acts are invited. It is a big highlight for their career, as it is typically the biggest television event in Japan. The artists are split up into teams of all male and all female, and at the end of the show, the judges and the audience vote to determine who performed better. The female team won that year, which they hadn't done since 2016. 
starting in January of 2021, Baby Metal would perform once again at the Budokan. They held 10 shows from January to April to celebrate their 10th anniversary, as well as the final chapter of the Metal Resistance era, and all 10 shows featured all 10 songs off the best of album they released, as well as the return of some fan favourites that hadn't been performing in years. On October 11th, Baby Metal released a piano rendition of The One, titled Stairway to Living Legend, and with it they announced their hiatus by saying that they were going to be sealed from the world. Baby Metal then went dark without any appearances, and it caused many to speculate over the following months that Baby Metal had ended. Meanwhile, during the hiatus, Momo appeared on Girls Planet 999, a Korean reality show to compete to become a K-pop idol for a new group. She introduced herself by playing Blackpink on a kazoo. I think we are all very grateful she was never serious about winning this competition. Some of the speculation of Baby Metal's disbandment was alleviated when on April 1st of 2022, Baby Metal revealed the Other One Restoration Project, which proceeded to slowly release snippets of new songs over the months leading up to the October announcement of a new album, a return concert in 2023, and the release of their first single, Hey Wait, Doesn't That Look Like Momo? Nah, it could just be me seeing things. On January 28th and 29th of 2023, Baby Metal held their concerts signifying their return, with Momo once again appearing as the Avenger. During these concerts and the performance of Doki Doki Morning would mark the first time three unnamed performers would appear from the Metalverse, a multiverse of parallel worlds. This new trio then proceeded to perform the song with Baby Metal while in a mirror formation to them. It was quickly figured out by fans that the lead singer was Miko Todaka, formerly of Sakura Gakuin and the two backup dancers were Saki Akimura, also formerly of SG, and Kokona Kato from Amuse Camp. These concerts would also be the last time to date that we would see the Eastern members of the Kami band perform with Baby Metal. Then at the end of the concerts, there was an indication that Baby Metal would finally get a long-awaited third member, and caused a spiral of debates online about who it would be though I think it's likely Momo. On March 10th, Baby Metal made their first appearance on The First Take, a YouTube channel where artists would perform a song of theirs in only one attempt. They chose a special piano rendition of Monochrome, a single off their album, The Other One, that then released on the 24th and was the final album they released as a duo. The next set of concerts took place on April 1st and 2nd, and the first day would proceed to cause panic and anxiety among concert attendees as it repeatedly talked about the death and end of Baby Metal. While the new trio of girls did not replace Baby Metal, they did make an appearance again at both of these concerts when they performed karate alongside them. Then at the end of the first night, the long-awaited new member was announced. Momo had said she was anxious going into these concerts as she was worried that Baby Metal fans wouldn't accept her, and all three of the girls were relieved as the cheers erupted. Sue and Moa had determined that the chaos of only two members had to end for them to continue on, and decided that the only way forward for Baby Metal was as a trio with Momo, and were incredibly grateful she was willing to take on the burden of joining a group with such a long-established history so they decided to put an end to the old baby metal and re-establish the group with the three of them. With the death and end of the old baby metal came the beginning of an all-new baby metal and with it a newly revised logo. From the end of these two concerts, they would then venture into the metalverse for their new story arc that would replace the previous ten-year-long metal resistance. The new tour would then kick off with them supporting Sabaton on their European tour, something that was announced in 2022, which makes me wonder why people were so worried during the concert. On August 18th, they released a new single titled Metali, 
featuring Tom Morello, which would be the first song ever released as the new baby metal. They would go on to perform it live with their return to Summer Sonic as the headliner of the mountain stage. This was also the festival that the mysterious trio would return once again, after their appearances at the baby metal concerts earlier in the year. The new kawaii metal group were named Metalverse, and was another brainchild of Koba, and this name will never cause any confusion at all, ever. Instead of the three members they had as they mirrored baby metal, they were now five and performing their own music. Joining the original three were Miki Yagi and Yume Nozaki, both former SG members, and the latter who then left Amuse on March 31st of 2024. Then baby metal went on to their North American part of the tour when the unthinkable happened. Someone threw something at them, a bracelet which Moa happily accepted and started a chain reaction of gifts thrown at them through the rest of their tour. Then beginning on October 31st, a musical festival called Next Fest was held in Japan by Bring Me the Horizon, and Baby Metal performed there in support of them. On all four days of the event, the two bands finally performed the song King Slayer Together. As the 2023-24 tour came to a close in March, another collaborative song was released titled Leave It All Behind, with F Hero and the Thai rock band Body Slam. Now that the anniversary of the formation of the new baby metal has passed, is the point where we come to the end of the guide. There was only so much room, with many festivals, shows and events that couldn't be included, so I only covered what I thought was the most interesting and most relevant for the current state of baby metal. The group is progressing at a faster pace and doing things they have never done before, with many more festivals and shows in the future, including their own music festival in Japan, which is scheduled in May. Maybe when it becomes a necessity, I will make an update to this guide. Other than that, as for what the future holds for baby metal... Only the Fox got knows! Exactly what it is! <laughs>